Hey guys, happy Monday. It's Daryl here. It is around noon on Monday here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Um, this is going to be an interesting video. I'm going to talk about race. Black people, me, uh, Puerto Rican people. And I'm going to be honest and just write for my... I know I'm a good person and I'm just going to go with the truth. So this is, this is what got me thinking about this. Um, these videos I've made recently uh, about what happened down in Georgia... Um, I, I read the comments from other people and I saw how a lot of white people um, just automatically took the side of protecting the neighborhood or the side of the McDaniels. And um, I wondered why or how I've, I've always been um, against racism. I've always been able to, I feel, do I know what it's like to be a black person? No, of course, no, no, absolutely not. I can't imagine. Um, what I said in one of the videos really got me thinking. I, I don't want to be condescending. I, I don't want to be um, patronizing at all. When I talked in one of my videos about riding my bike, and I, I, I constantly, I've had stuff thrown at me, screamed. I've had cars drive by close and scream at me. And I, and I almost, you know, hit, it, hit the curb. Or, and, and this happens often because people, I, I don't know why, to tell you the truth. People can just be rude and mean. Um, I, I think some of it might have to do with... Um, people being envious of free time or being people being envious of somebody trying to make themselves physically fit. Um, I don't know. But I thought about that fear, the fear of being stuff thrown at me. Then I, I thought about what it must be like. I, I, I've seen, I, I've read articles, I've read a couple books about, and black people talk about growing up and being called the N-word, being screamed at. Um, and I can't imagine what that's like, um, to have to live, to, to live with that, to, to deal with that on a, on a daily basis. Um, how, how to explain that to your kids? Um, I, I have no idea. I, I, I can't even imagine. Um, I'm going to bring up in my life, since I've been clean and sober, I use empathy to to try to bridge gaps between me and people that don't agree with me, or not, but not just that, between me and other people, but I use a lot. Um, like the old saying, uh, walk a mile, walk a mile in a man's moccasins. I don't know if it's a Native American saying, but um, you know, just put yourself in somebody else's position. Or even when I used to get in fights with my girlfriend to try to understand her point of view. Um, I thought about when I was young and I used to get picked on because I was overweight. Uh, I didn't get picked. I never got called. I never got, you know, I got picked last. Um, I remember getting chased by a group of the, the, the popular girls. It was even worse because it was girls. The popular girls and they were yelling fat man da, 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 and they were chasing me around the the uh, playground and it was I still remember it was it was terrible and um uh, I was being picked on because of the way I looked and um you know they didn't know anything about me as a person or anything but because I was overweight I was the target of their ridicule um I know I, the only reason I bring this up is because I'm trying, I'm just trying to understand what it must be like. I know it's probably not even coming close. Um, but that right there is a big, big reason. Because I was wondering, what makes me different um, in that I believe in racial equality? Um, and, and how come when I, I read these comments or some of these comments from my videos, why is it these other white people automatically take the side of other white people? Have they been wronged? Um, do they, are they stereotyping? You know, did something happen and they don't trust all? And it could be vice versa. It could be black people not trusting white people. 
But I'm going to bring you guys, this, now this is where it gets, it's going to get interesting. <sighs> all right, uh, the reason, the biggest lesson I learned that we're all so much alike. This is, don't, don't let me explain after I say it, was my drug use, my years of drug use. This is honestly how it works in Connecticut around here. When I used to go buy crack and cocaine, I would go to the inner city black neighborhoods. And I understand the socioeconomics of all that, but that's where I went. When I wanted heroin, I went to the Puerto Rican neighborhoods. I'm not going to get into why these drugs were sold and because, you know, the, the quick money and all that. Um, it's more than that. It's, it's not even really about the drugs. The drugs were what initially got me into that neighborhood. Now, this is what a lot of people probably don't understand. Um, I spent, being a drug, a drug addict takes 24 hours a day of your time. When you're not using, you're thinking about using or trying to find it or trying to find the money. It's, it's a 24-7 job, all right? Um, I would spend a lot of time in these neighborhoods, almost all my time, my waking time, even, even some of my sleeping time, um, waiting or hanging out, not, not being high, not having to do with drugs, um, because it was just convenient um, to my lifestyle. I remember being there one time, and I had to wait, I, was, I had to wait for somebody to come back from New York City city and I was in these housing projects and there was a man sitting on a porch with it with his daughter and I figured there was garbage laying on the ground there was a couple cans and I figured I'd make myself useful I was standing by my car and I went over to pick the can up and the man thought I was going to come over and ask him for drugs with his little daughter there and he said don't you even dare don't do it and I just kept walking and he's like don't do it and then I reached down and picked up the cans and I threw them in the garbage. You know, I just figured make myself useful. The, the cans laying around the garbage just was bothering me. And I figured I might as well do something while I was waiting. This guy thought I was approaching him, walking towards him to ask him for drugs. <laughs> when he saw that's what I was doing, and he really did realize that that's actually what I was doing, he apologized and we started talking. Um... And we became friends. He, and he isn't a drug user or a drug dealer. We started talking about cars. And I went to school with his brother. I, didn't, I had no idea that he was related to... He happened to, be, he happened to be a brother of somebody that I went to graduate high school with. All right, so being in that house... And I had a lot of time to... to, 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 to do away with like I said I was I was gonna I had to wait there and I didn't have a car at the time either so I was in this neighborhood and I spent time in this man's house and like I said he's not a drug user or anything now this had nothing to do with drugs at this point and I'm in the house and I think he was cooking collard greens I think that's what it was and it reminded me I'm French Canadian and Native American and my mother used to love or does love um fiddleheads I, I can't stand them. I don't want nothing. Butter and they're like ferns. Now, collard greens and fiddleheads are different, but there was something with the butter and the smell that just reminded me so much of my mother's and my grandmother's kitchen as I was sitting there. And I looked around and there was a crucifix on the wall with Jesus. And that, that reminded me of my grandmother's kitchen. And then they sat down to eat and the... His wife put out a stack of bread uh, with four pieces in a plate. And my grandmother used to do the same thing with pickles. Would, would sweet. And I, I was like, this is just crazy. I didn't say anything at the time. But that house re reminded me so much of where I grew up. Um, and it just struck me, you know, as we're so much alike. Our, our skin color is different. And it's even different foods. But the feeling behind the comfort food, behind the, the religious symbolism, is all the same. 
you know, and it just that that moment really struck me. Um, and I still think about that guy. Um, you know, now that I, I've given up drugs for 13 and a half years, and like I said, this incident had nothing to do with drugs. And later that day, I did what I did, and it had nothing to do with this gentleman that I met. But every time I went to that neighborhood, and it was a lot, you know, because I was a 24-7 drug user. If I had some spare time, I'd stop in and talk to my friend. Also, this same thing happened in the south end of this city um, with, with a Puerto Rican family. I, um, I remember going in the, the kitchen, and it was the, it's always the smell of the kitchen. And I can't remember what was cooking in this Puerto Rican uh, kitchen, family's kitchen, but it reminded me so much of, uh, of my grandmother again. My grandmother was French-Canadian. Uh, my mother spoke French before she spoke English. She still has an accent. And it, it just reminds me so much. Um, th there's just so many similarities. And I just started realizing how much we're all alike. Um, and that had a lot to do with it. you know. So when I hear about these people being, you know, like being shot and there just isn't the same kind of justice as there is for white people or the, one of the worst things too is how the native american women keep disappearing and there or or when black women get killed or raped and there's so much less of a hubbub about it or you say say a five-year-old white girl disappears here around here and the whole country will hear about it i'm guessing if a five-year-old black girl disappears in um, down in the Bronx, the South Bronx, or um, Harlem, which is probably just an hour and a half from here, you know, would it be the same reaction? No, and I just, and part of it makes me makes it makes me feel like I remember being in that kitchen and how that could be me. Um, and it must be a terrible feeling. And I, I, and this being America, I just don't, I don't know, maybe I, I it's idealism. I don't know. Um, but something about those kitchens made me connect um, and feel that we have so much more in common. You know, it was something about being in those people, in those kitchens of um, a black person, a black family and a Puerto Rican family that um, really changed the way I thought, I think, you know. And it, it, like I said, when I first said it was about my drug use, that's what got me into those neighborhoods. I would have never gone into those neighborhoods if I hadn't used drugs. And like I said, it's not really about the drugs. It was just me getting into that neighborhood or being forced, really. Being a white guy from this little town, if I had never used, I, I, would, be, I would have been terrified to ever go down there. I would have never gone down there, and I would have never experienced any of this. And like I said, you know, as long as you guys understand, it's not the drugs. We're not talking about the, That's initially what got me into the, into the neighborhood and then into being friends with, these, with, with, uh, with people who weren't drug users and getting to meet their families and seeing how much alike we are. So I hope that makes sense. Because um, I really wondered why... You know, I was reading some of the comments, and I assumed they were from a white person because um, they were defending the McDaniels. They were just, you know, and the the, the person called me, uh, am I just an idiot or something like that? And sometimes I think it's the insults that really make make me think. Um, I don't 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 get me wrong. I don't like them, but I wonder why this person is thinking like this and why I'm not. I hope that made some sense. Um, all right. You guys have a good one day.